Hi Scorpio, welcome to Higher Source Tarot. For your Law of Attraction Tarot and Oracle card readings, these readings are for all Scorpio, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus. We will have both a money and a love reading today, but I also have a Law of Attraction message linked in the description box below if you're interested in that. And so this will be your theme for the reading today, the readings today from the Edgar Casey Inspirational Quotes deck you have. For each entity, each soul, is his brother's keeper. Because we're all linked. So whether it be a frustration financially or some other question that you have about your love life, we're always linked. Our souls don't get frustrated. Our souls only see beauty and love. So in one another. So let's ask first about money. What advice do you have for Scorpio to attract financial abundance and prosperity. What does Scorpio need to know about money, please? All right, we will lay out the tarot and then we'll have a um, fortune oracle card. Then we'll do the love reading. You've got the four of swords, the empress, the knight of swords. Interesting. Now that's in the, this is in the advice. Okay, that Seven of Swords is in the advice. And I'll tell you what, like I always tell you, the tarot is your best friend who always tells you the truth. I do feel like you're, what you're coming into is this. So I do feel like this is about staying vigilant. It's it's true. The, the Swords, especially this Knight of Swords, this one's on a quest. He seeks out honesty and the truth. So if you're owed money, I feel like you're going to uncover something. I heard like static listing. Or you're going to uncover something maybe where there's been a mistake. I also feel like, too, you're going to be prone on the day-to-day -to, -day to catching little errors, overcharges, or you get you get a bill at a restaurant or some other business, and you realize they've already included the gratuity. So you catch it, and that way you don't pay it twice. And nothing against servers. I understand that there's a lot of reasons for that. Plus, a lot of businesses are starting to get charged credit card fees, if you didn't know that, and they're starting to weave that into things or even charge you. So either way with that, I feel like you're going to be very aware of that. So you're going to catch things. And even if it's something too, where you get some kind of a bill and you have the option of paying it online, I feel like you're going to be very aware if there's fees hidden in that. All of a sudden you get an 11% fee on a bill and you go, well, wait a minute, that's just a fee to use the service. Let's find another way to pay for it. So with this Four of Swords, this is in the past. If, you're, if your financial life has been pretty dormant and you say, I haven't made any big changes, but this is a card too that gives you that gives you stability. So when the Four of Swords comes in, it is resting and retreating, but it's also saying it, it, we have growth coming out of this, that there's it's almost like you get ready to speed things up. So if things have been pretty calm, I do feel like you have a change. This is also too a time of reflection on what really matters. Now you have fertility here too. So if you are having a child or you're doing something different with your family life, I feel like it's reflected in the cards as we move forward, but it all begins here. And so it is a very calm card. It's just kind of letting things be. It's building strength. It's hanging up those swords and giving yourself time to meditate, to clear the mind and get very clear about what you want. Because when the Empress comes in, it is time to get busy again. And it's interesting that you had the Four of Swords there because before the Empress is the High Priestess, and that is a card of planning and analysis. So I feel like they're saying if you're looking to make some kind of a big change in your life, let's make sure we're doing the planning and analysis, not just forging ahead. Okay, and I feel like with the proper planning, it's going to go great. But I also feel like you're going to uncover some things in that phase of planning. If it's researching a job or researching a move that may cause you to course correct. I still feel like somebody here is doing almost like an audit on their finances where you're going to be catching things that you've been overcharged with. I'm telling you what, I also feel like too with this. You may find that there's been interest rates that have been raised on you and you might take, decide I'm going to get rid of this card or this situation because the interest rate is so crazily high. So I do feel like your financial life is going to be much more stable and just much more organized. But I also want to tell you too, with any changes, you're going to be in this energy where it's like, get out of my way, I'll handle this. So be aware of that because it does make you get the job done, but it makes you get it done oftentimes single-handedly. Now, I mentioned before, 
This is in the advice, okay? This is not the outcome. They're saying, watch out for this. Watch out for carelessness. And, there, and it could be on a personal level too. You know, if you're traveling, you know, don't leave your bag on, under your chair when you're in a foreign country with your passport in it, right? That kind of stuff where things can kind of get snatched and taken. I just feel like they're saying, be aware of that. Be aware of your surroundings is what I just heard. So I like readings like that because for somebody, that's going to be a difference. You're going to say, oh God, I keep thinking about this darn reading. So with this, we're going to close and then we'll do the love. This is um, the fortune oracle. It's the card of the owl. There are spiritual messages and great wisdom to be found during this period of transition. So again, just being aware and vigilant, but you're moving forward here. And I also, like I said, feel like you're going to stabilize your finances a bit. Okay, what does Scorpio need to know about love, please? What advice do you have for Scorpio to attract the love of their lives into their lives, please? All right, we will do, again, the same thing set up here with the love reading. You've got the Six of Cups. Oh, boy, this is the present, the Ten of Swords. Judgment is in the outcome, though. I like that a lot, especially if you're an owner of a broken heart with that Ten of Swords. So the Six of Cups, I feel like, is happiness until it wasn't. It also, too, may be somebody from your past that perhaps you got connected to again. And I just feel like it falls apart with that Ten of Swords, though. But with Judgment, you're going to have freedom and a new happiness. So I do feel like you have somebody new coming in if you've been broken hearted. Um, but with this, this Six of Cups energy too, if you've been single for a period and it's because you've been, I heard, convalescing where you've been recovering from something difficult or challenging in your life, I do feel like that period is ending, that you're going to be concluding that. And so for some of you, if you made, you know, if you had more relationships with friends, you found that you were just more prone to being with, you know, with sort of friendly relationships and maybe not in the love in the market for a, a love connection, I do feel like you're going to be passing through this with this Ten of Swords. So this is the present. So especially those of you that said, I've so given up on love, I don't even know why I'm listening to this right now. The cards know it and they're showing it. And so with this, there is some kind of an ending, no doubt about it. Now, I'm getting this too now, for, and it may be just one of you on here. If you have a relationship and it has, you're in the relationship and it has been strained by something, your job, a commitment to something. I get like an artist with a show that's just taking up all your time. I do feel like that's finally coming to an end and it will save that relationship is what I hear. Like something that's really been putting a lot of pressure. It's coming to an end finally for once and for all. And what I love is judgment in the outcome. This is such a great card because they're getting the most important information of their entire lives. This is a turning point. And this is, I heard, salvation. So those of you who are struggling in a current relationship, I do feel like it's going to be on the mend. I do feel like you're going to release the negativity, release the toxicity, let it go for once and for all and move forward. And so with judgment, you have communication coming in, but it will make your heart sing. Now, if it's a new relationship, I do still feel like this is all about letting go of the old. These coffins, the coffins of the ego rest behind you. They're not coming along. You're not putting those on your back and carrying them forward with you. You're leaving them in the past where they belong. So the Seven of Pentacles energy, the wait is over. But I also feel like they're telling you to be selective. So if you know something's not right for you in a relationship, I do feel like you're going to find it's pretty easy to pass it over. But with the Seven of Pentacles and the Judgment card, I, do, I feel like you're attracting someone here who's in it for the long term. This is for the long haul, okay? So let's see now, Scorpio, what the whispers of love want to tell you. I love this one. Turn on your heart light. Reflect on the time when you experience love. Because when you get into the energy of feeling love, you will attract more of it. It's universal law, okay? You get what you are. And when you're in that feeling of love, that's what shows up in your life. So good things are on the way for you, Scorpio. I love you and I'll be back again soon.